Hello students, welcome to our series. Here we are going to cover the entire topic of General Studies Paper 1. I will be moving swiftly through these videos, so feel free to pause and review if needed. We have comprehensively covered each topic, so use this as a tool to learn at your own pace. Today we are going to cover a very important topic from the UPSC syllabus of General Studies Paper 1 that is distribution of key natural resources in the world including South Asia and Indian subcontinent and the factors responsible for the location of primary, secondary and tertiary sector industries in various parts of the world including India. First we are going to start with the distribution of key natural resources. The resource is any source of value or utility. In another word, it's what we use to produce goods and services to meet human needs. Let's try to understand this definition through a simple analogy of a lemonade stand. Suppose there is a person A and he is thirsty. In the nearby garden, there is a lemon tree. Now this lemon tree is not of much use to this person. Now another person comes and he decides to pick up those lemons, squeeze them, add sugar and water and make lemonade. He sets up a stand and starts selling lemonade to this person. This person A gets a refreshing drink and the other person earns some money. In this analogy, the lemons represent natural resource, the process of converting them into lemonade by adding sugar and water and the effort of selling it is the human resource. The stand, the juicer and the glass used to serve the lemonade represent capital resource. All these combined fulfill a human need making them resources. On the basis of the above analogy, we can categorize resources into natural and man-made. Natural resources include land, water, mineral, energy, marine, forest and wildlife. Man-made resources include technology, infrastructure, skills etc. In this series, we are going to focus upon natural resources because this is part of our syllabus. We will be starting with land resources first because Land is a foundational resource as the availability of other vital resources like water, mineral, energy, forest largely hinges on it. For instance, 97% of world's water reside in saline oceans. The essential fresh water for human use is found on land as surface and groundwater. It is also a critical resource because beyond being our living and working space, Land is also crucial for food production and ecosystem balance. Let's see the spatial distribution of land resources across the world. As you know, oceans comprise 70% of the world's surface and continents comprise only 30% of the world's surface. That means land resources across the world are fixed or finite. And if you see hemisphere-wise distribution of land resources, you will notice that 68% of the world's land lies in the northern hemisphere whereas only 32% of the world's land lies in the southern hemisphere. And this is the reason why the northern hemisphere is called as the land hemisphere. And 60% of the land lies in the eastern hemisphere whereas only 40% of the land lies in the western hemisphere. And if you see continent-wise distribution of land resources, you will notice that Asia and Africa together account for approximately 50% of the world's total land. North America accounts for 16%, South America accounts for 12%, Europe accounts for 7% and Oceania accounts for 6% of the world's total land resources. So land resources across the world are not just fixed but they are also unequally distributed. They are even further divided into different political units with countries like Russia having more than 10% of the world's land and some of the smallest countries like Vatican City, Monaco, Nauru together having less than 1% of the total land resources of the world. While one might assume that extensive land availability automatically translates to economic prosperity, but this is not always the case. Consider the case of Africa with its rich 20% share in global land However, it has not reached its economic potential or development due to lack of infrastructure, technology and other vital man-made resources. Land can be categorized into three primary types, agricultural, forest and barren. Agricultural land, as the name suggests, is primarily utilized for cultivation, shaping economies through agricultural income and also shaping local lifestyles. 
Forested regions not only house diverse ecosystems but also play a pivotal role in climate regulation and carbon sequestration. Barren land, often seen as unproductive because they are not good for habitation or agriculture, but they hold its own unique ecological importance and potential resources. Understanding these distinct land types is crucial as we dwell deeper into their individual characteristics and significance. Another thing we need to know is that approximately 10 to 11 percent of the world's total land area is considered arable. Arable refers specifically to those land that can be used for growing crops and is typically characterized by fertile soil and favorable climate. Understanding the distribution and availability of arable land is crucial for food security, environmental conservation and sustainable development planning. Let's have a look at the distribution of arable land across the continents with Asia, Africa and North America having 15 to 20 percent of the land dedicated to agriculture. Europe having the largest percentage of land dedicated to agriculture from 25 to 30 percent. South America having 10 to 15 percent of land dedicated to agriculture and Australia having the lowest having 6 to 7 percent of land dedicated to agriculture. And if we also include Antarctica, it has virtually no arable land due to its extreme climate. If we see the distribution among countries, there is considerable variations. As in case of Asia, countries like India and Bangladesh having a higher percentage of arable land. In Africa, Egypt for instance has a very low percentage of arable land due to its desert conditions. While countries in West Africa tend to have a higher percentages, Europe has a relatively high percentage of arable land. Countries like France and Ukraine known for their fertile soils. North America, United States and Canada having large areas dedicated to agriculture. In South America, Brazil and Argentina contribute significantly due to their large size. Australia is having lower percentage of arable land primarily due to its arid conditions and infertile soils. So another feature about distribution of land resources is that the arable land across the world is low and it varies significantly across continents and countries, posing a challenge for food security, environment and development. Let's have a look at the forest. Forest constitute around 31% of the total distribution of land resources in the world. These are found in large quantities in the Amazon Basin, Siberia and Central Africa. These are the lungs of our planet and very critical for the ecological sustainability of the planet. They also have socio-economic importance as a source of livelihood for many tribal communities and they also provide timber. Around 33% of the land is barren in the form of deserts or mountains. Although these are rich in minerals but they are not suitable for agriculture. For example, the Rocky Mountains in North America, the Andes in South America, Himalayas in South Asia. Deserts are mostly found in Africa, the Sahara Desert, in West Australia and Asia, that is the Gobi Desert. The polar areas are basically the cold deserts of the world. In equatorial and polar regions, only 10% of the world's population reside. This is due to extreme climates, either it is too hot and rainy or too cold, it makes these regions less conductive for large-scale human habitation. 90% of the global population is residing in temperate regions and within this, a significant majority live in fertile plains and coastal areas due to the availability of resources and trade opportunities. For example, 40% of the world's population lives within 100 km of the coast. Taking China as an example, more than 60% of its population resides in coastal provinces. This offers economic opportunities in the form of ports and connectivity, while also face challenges like sea level rise. As most of the region within the temperate zone is either mountainous like the Rockies in North America, Indies in South America, Himalayas in Asia or deserted like the Sahara in Africa, Arabian desert in the Middle East, which is again less conducive for habitation though they are rich in minerals. In total, around 30% of the world's total land is barren, which comprise the frigid zones, the mountains and the desert areas. Another thing to be noticed is that the urban areas occupy a relatively small portion of the earth's total land 
globally urban regions take up to about 1 to 3% of the land according to un 55% of the world's population live in urban areas and this figure is projected to increase to 68% by 2050 people migrate from rural to urban settings in search of jobs education and other opportunities This disparity where a majority of global population lives on a small fraction of the land results in a high population density in urban areas. This density is both a strength and a challenge while it can lead to economic dynamism and cultural vibrancy. It also poses challenges related to infrastructure, housing and environment. Land resources of a country's immense advantages across various fronts at the same time they also come with their set of challenges let's discuss some of them let's discuss economic implications countries like USA and Russia they benefit from their vast land resources enabling varied industries from agriculture to technology nations with unique landscape or natural wonders like Australia's great barrier reef gain significant tourism revenue At the same time there are also challenges landlocked countries like Bolivia and Kazakhstan face higher trade costs due to the lack of direct access to sea over reliance on a particular land resource can make an economy vulnerable to global market fluctuation now let's discuss some of the social implications indigenous communities especially have traditions deeply rooted in their land resources but there are also problems like unequal land distribution which can result in internal conflicts rapid urban expansion can lead to loss of arable land affecting food security there are also geopolitical implications associated with it countries or regions with essential resources like oil in the middle east or minerals in africa yield considerable geopolitical power At the same time the Middle East has experienced decades of tension due to its oil wealth as arctic ice melts due to global warming previously inaccessible areas rich in oil and minerals become reachable this has led nations like Russia Canada US even India eyeing for control leading to potential geopolitical tension now forests definitely have certain advantages Regions like Amazon and Congo Basin play a crucial role in absorbing global carbon dioxide emissions. But there are also problems like deforestation. The destruction of forests in areas like the Amazon affect global climate patterns. Exploitation of land resources can lead to habitat destruction and species extinction. Land misuse can accelerate global warming leading to phenomena like desertification in regions of Africa. So proper stewardship ensures that these resources continue benefiting humanity without compromising the environment or global peace. So in this video we have uh, covered uh, various features of distribution of land resources in the world and we have learned that there are finite resources they are fixed and they are unevenly distributed and not only this they have been politically divided into various units and the arable land around the world is low which has far reaching consequences uh, when we talk about food security or environmental conservation and we also talked about uh, the problem of deforestation basically in uh, amazon basin and uh, the problem of uh, desertification especially in africa and the implications of uh, this distribution of land resources around the world and the way forward now you can attempt these previous equations you can write answers and submit them on my channel or instagram and uh, In the next uh, lecture we will talk about the distribution of land resources uh, especially in India